Thanks very much, Phil. So next we have, uh, we're moving down to the elbow, and we're uh, very lucky to have David Stanley, who's enormous experience and has taught many of the teachers that have taught us uh, about elbows. Thanks, David. Oh, thank you very much indeed for the invitation. I was told I had to talk about the proximal montegia, and I was told it was a scary elbow session. And I think proximal montegia fractures are really difficult. They're probably the ones around the elbow that I find the most difficult because you can't always see what you want to see. I have no conflicts of interest. First, of course, described by Giovanni Battista Montegia in 1814. They're uncommon injuries, and that's part of the problem because we don't see them very often. We worry about them and, and we regard them as difficult to fix. They make up 7% of all the ulnar fractures, but less than 1% of elbow injuries themselves. Classified by Bado in 1967 into the four types that uh, you'll all be familiar with, uh, but then more recently uh, subdivided by Jesse Jupiter. And this classification really looks at uh, the site of the ulnar fracture and the complexity of the ulnar fracture. So if I was going to try and give you three tips, it's on these next three slides. So if you can try and uh, stay awake to look at these, that would be really good. Uh, the first thing you need to know is that when you're looking at the injury itself is you need good quality x-rays. And if you haven't got good quality x-rays, you need to do some CT scans with or without 3D reconstructions. And when you're assessing those x-rays, the things to look at is whether the radial head's fractured, is the ulna stroke olecranon fracture simple or multifragmentary, and is the coronoid intact or fractured. So have a careful look at the x-rays for those things. And then as far as treatment is concerned, anatomical reduction, internal fixation of the ulna. When you do that, the radial head, if it's not fractured, will come nicely, nearly always, uh, nicely reduced. If the radial head's got a fracture, and particularly if that's complex, that probably ought to be dealt with first because it will give you guidance as to how to fix the ulna, and I'll show you that in a moment. And please do screen in theatre to make sure everything's reduced and fixed. So I said those were the three important slides, so let's just recheck on that. Investigations, good quality x-rays, CT if you need it. Preoperative planning, what's the situation with the radial head? Look at the ulna stroke olecranon, is it simple or complex? Coronoid intact or not? And then an anatomical re reconstruction. So what about technique? Usually the patient will be supine. That, in my experience, is the best position to have the patient. High arm tourniquet, arm across the chest on a pillow. You need a good assistant. It is pointless with these difficult fractures around the elbow having a junior houseman with you in theatre. They are more interested in the next hot date that they're arranging. They are not interested in the elbow fracture that's going to take two to three hours to fix. So please make sure you have someone who is competent, understands what you're trying to achieve, and is there to assist you, hence the word assistant. Posterior midline incision, full thickness skin flaps, and then identify, obviously, and protect the ulnar nerve. I was trying to demonstrate that all operative uh, images are difficult, um, but the wrist is down here, the shoulder up here. When you open up at the back, because the ulnar fracture is usually complete, with or without comminution, you really can just twist it backwards, like doing an olecranon osteotomy. So the exposure exposes itself for you. And the most important thing not to do is to think, well, I can just bring that straight back and put a plate on it and everything's going to be fine because you have to know what's going on with that coronoid. You have to know about the radial head. With your approach, as far as the radial head is concerned, depending on the complexity of the injury itself, you may want to lift the flaps coming on on the lateral side to sort out the radial head if it's relatively minor, or in this case, shown here, you may as well do it all through the one incision. 
And I would suggest that it's worth fixing the radial head or replacing the radial head at the beginning because if you do that, you get the length right and therefore reconstructing your ulna is, uh, in my experience, somewhat easier. So here, if you look here, you've got a radial head replacement. The radial head is up against the lesser sigmoid notch, so you know your length is about right. Also note that in this case, there are several fragments making up the coronoid, so you know that's going to be difficult, and you've got to get those reduced and held. And when you can do that, and you can see here there are wires holding the various fragments, once you've done that and got it all reduced, you can put a plate on. And with these contoured plates, you can angle your screws somewhat to pick up the various fragments. And if that's not possible, you need to hold those fragments either with additional screws or small wires to bring everything together. And one of the other things we will use sometimes is using fiber wire just to bring bits in and allow them to be held there while you're fixing. And then when you uh, follow those sort of uh, principles, you can convert the x-ray that's on your left into the reconstruction on your right. Rehabilitation, we usually put patients in a back slab at 90 degrees for about a week. There's nothing special about that except we find it useful to allow the soft tissues uh, to settle. I would prefer that than going for early movement. Early movement isn't essential, but going for early movement and having the wound breakdown will be a greater problem to you. And then instead of using any fancy braces, we just use a collar and cuff sling and allow flexion and gradually over a period of eight weeks or so, six to eight weeks, gradually allow them to come out into greater extension. And then at three months, they can begin uh, strengthening exercises. We're looking for at least a range of flexion and extension of 100 degrees because that will give you a reasonably functional range of movement and you want about 50% of the normal pronation and supination. And if you look at uh, the literature, in the 1980s, really less than a quarter of patients with these injuries had anything like what you would call a functional outcome. And then 10 years later, with improved techniques, and I think it's gone on improving since then, uh, the figures have increased up to three quarters or so. So in Sheffield, and most of these patients um, are one of my colleagues, Amjid Ali's patients, who is an excellent fixator of these, these injuries. So we had a total of 26 patients that we tried to review. We'd lost four uh, as they'd moved away. More women than men, average age below, just below 60. Radial head replacements, we found that it had to replace 10. We fixed five. And... Uh, we had seven that were either not fractured at all or had minor fragments which we removed. Follow-up of four years, uh, three plate removals, that's not uncommon because obviously, as with tension band wires, the plates and the wires are just literally below the skin and they often cause patients irritation. And we achieved a functional range of movement, 80% of them had either good, excellent, or fair Mayo elbow performance scores, and the Oxford scores were reasonable as well. So what can you do? Well, this is a, a Montegia type two injury, fairly simple ulnar mm -hmm. fracture, uh, small um, component to the radial head fracture, so that can be fixed with a headless screw and then the ulna reconstructed slightly more complicated situation and these I don't know why but we often do seem to get uh, patients referred in who've had fixators put across the elbow personally I think that's pretty much a waste of time I would prefer to have the patients early rather than have uh, an early intervention with wires and screws and you can convert that into that sort of outcome then they get a bit more difficult, and I mentioned earlier that if you can't be sure of the uh, fracture combination, it's worth getting a CT scan. But usually when you get a CT scan, it scares you more than you thought it was going to scare you. So you end up with looking at multiple fragments that you need to think about how you're going to reduce those and hold them. But you can, 
and you just need to spend your time doing it. Again, I would suggest that replacing the radial head to give you some idea of length in these very complicated fractures does give you that basis on which to reconstruct the ulna. Another example here. I mentioned as well that when you're in theatre, do take image intensifier pictures to check both the stability, the fixation, and the orientation. And the top uh, illustrations there are all x-rays taken in theatre in different angulations. Um, and then the bottom two, the AP and lateral, are after fracture, uh, the fracture has healed. But you'll notice there that we've used additional screws and wires to bring in fragments uh, that were not easily held with the, on the plate. And that was the outcome in that guy. So in summary, they're usually complex. They're usually underestimated. Uh, the surgery is demanding and time-consuming. Uh, you need to address every element of the injury. So remember what I said at the beginning, assess the radial head, assess the coronoid, and assess the comminution of the proximal ulna. You must achieve stability if you want to have a functional outcome. And most patients will end up with a degree of stiffness. But on the whole, you can normally achieve a functional range. But most importantly, also manage the patient's expectations. So when I see these, I go and tell the patients that this, their elbow is never going to be the same again. And once you've told them it's never going to be the same again, as close as you get to being back to normal, they're usually delighted. So thank you very much indeed.